Hey everyone, John Stecker here. So, I got something really cool I'm trying. Um, a couple months ago I got the Arsenal, which is... Let me get the camera working here. Which is this little device sitting on top of my camera, which is designed to help you take better photos, because it's going to examine the scene and based on its giant database give you the best exposure uh, that you can supposedly get from its uh, AI. Uh, but I saw a video where their next software release, one of the things it does is it does time lapses, but their next software release um, has the Holy Grail software built into it where you can set your parameters for your exposure compensation, your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO, and it will automatically start um, uh, start exposing based on the best it can do and then as the light changes it will uh, make adjustments based on the parameters that you've set how far you want your f-stop your um, shutter speed etc to go um, hasn't come out yet but I contacted Arsenal and said hey I really really want to test this um, because uh, it also is supposed to work with sliders like the Syrup Genie, which I love to use. Uh, I'm not testing that today, but I'm just testing the Holy Grail part of it. Uh, it's on a fixed point, no sliders, no uh, tilt, no pans, uh, just shooting at a fixed point uh, up on the sky. And um, because I'm just trying how well the Holy Grail works. Uh, I set my parameters, I didn't put in any exposure compensation. Uh, I said shutter speed um, <coughs> from one four thousandth of a second, which I think it's his top, all the way down to 30 seconds. Uh, I set the F, the aperture, sorry, I set the aperture at 2.8. I want that to remain consistent. Um, and I set the ISO anywhere from 200 to 2,000. And um, <coughs> I told it I wanted to take a picture every 30 seconds. So it is been working for a little more than an hour we're still a half an hour away from sunset you can see the sun's really right there on my eyes um, and I set it to run for I think about by the time it's done it should run about eight and a half total hours I'm not sure how far I'm gonna run into that but it, it's a hot July day so sunsets very late uh, into the evening so um, it's gonna run for a while before the Sun even sets I'm not even it, it's not even a beautiful day to do time lapses. There's no clouds in the sky. I'm not doing it um, because I want to get a great time lapse. I want to see how well uh, the Holy Grail works. So I'm starting it. I started it from the sun was uh, up a bit here. Now it's down to about here. I'm letting it go down and then shoot several hours into the night. I just want to see how well it works on adjusting those. Because otherwise, to do a Holy Grail, you've got to watch your exposures yourself. You've got to watch on the back of the camera, see what it's like. Okay, it's starting to get a little dark. I want to make a, an exposure change. Okay, a little while later, make another exposure change. And so when you go back to look at your photos um, in LR time lapse or something, you see a the, the exposure start to go down and then jumps up and then goes down and jumps up and then... But you're the one doing that. You're manually watching it and doing it. This is doing it supposedly automatically for me. So my first test is just to do all by itself on a boring patch of sky uh, a Holy Grail time lapse. I want to see how well that works and then uh, I'm going to match it up with the Genie uh, and it's supposed to be able to work with the Genie. So the Genie will do the actual uh, shutter release but it's going to monitor the exposure the same way it's doing now so that way that you don't have to worry about in the move shoot move that the arsenal will shoot while the genie's moving it the genie will control when it shoots the arsenal will just control the exposure so I'm gonna let that run a bunch of hours see how it works and um, if you notice I'll just show you what I got set up here I got it set on a plate connected to my really crappy deck railing. Um, I'm also using a, a clamp just to be 100% sure. And on top of that plate, I've got my ball uh, ball head, 
I'm shooting a Nikon D600 on a Tamron 28 to 72.8. I've got the Arsenal on top, and I've got. Sorry, these things love to spin when you don't want them to spin. I've got both the Arsenal and my camera on AC power, connected down here uh, to AC power, so that I'm not worried about how long it's running and if I'm going to run out of battery power. So like I said, it's just pointed at a boring patch of sky um, just to see what it's going to look like when it's all done. So we're going to let that run for a few hours and then check it out. The time lapse is now complete and I've loaded the photos on the, my computer and I'm taking a look at them here in LR time lapse. And the first thing you're probably going to notice is generally it was underexposed uh, throughout the entire, uh, almost the entire time lapse. Um, it was consistently underexposed, so uh, I'm not sure why, but maybe that can be easily taken care of with just uh, exposure compensation before I get started. Uh, I can post-process it and lighten it up, and I probably will, but I would have liked uh, this blue line to be a lot closer to the yellow line. Uh, and as you can go through, yeah, it is kind of dark, even though the sun didn't go down until right about... Uh, here you can start seeing stars come out so I'm not sure why but uh, I think that can easily be taken care of with an exposure compensation the arsenal does support that uh, when you set it up you set a number of parameters uh, you set the ISO range the aperture range and the shutter speed range and one of the things you can select is or, or can make an adjustment to is exposure compensation the next thing to notice is it took uh, about three shots for it to figure out where it wanted the exposure to be. The first shot was f11 one five hundredth of a second at ISO 200. Second f22 one two hundredth of a second 200 ISO. Next one kept the aperture on the ISO the same, dropped it down or dropped it yeah down to one two hundred fiftieth of a second, and it kept it there for a while. So it was making its adjustments based on its very large. Uh, database and trying to come up with its proper exposure. Now, uh, I did not do uh, what Arsenal thought the exposure should be without the Holy Grail time lapse. So maybe if it had just been a regular shot through Arsenal, it would have been what I would have considered a more properly exposed shot. Uh, I have not tested that. But um, you can see it stayed at these uh, at these uh, triangle triangle settings I'm talking about the exposure triangle aperture shutter speed and ISO. so it kept that for a while as it got dark uh, and then eventually it changed it to one two hundredth of a second as it got a little darker and you can see the jump in the graph it got darker 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 changed to two hundredth of a second and the uh, overall exposure went up and then it, as the sun went down further, it got darker and darker and darker, and then changed to one 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 hundred sixtieth of a second, and went back up. And that's what a holy grail time lapse you'd expect to see uh, if you were doing it by yourself. Um, you'd be looking at the back of the camera. Every few photos, you could say, "Okay, is that getting dark? If it is, I'm going to change one of my settings: uh, aperture, shutter speed, or ISO." And so that's what it was doing for me. And I didn't have to sit out on my hot deck on a very warm July evening. So it did that over and over and over again, as you can see. But it didn't, it wasn't constantly trying to change it with every single uh, exposure uh, as the, the sun was darkening, or the sun was going down and the sky was getting darker. It kept it um, for a few frames. And so it wasn't constantly shifting around, but you can see it was getting it was making its changes faster so here's 80th of a, 80th of a second 60th of a second 50th of a second 40th uh 30th so you can see this one only one two three four frames and then it dropped down to one 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 twenty fifth of a second or etc etc and it kept the uh aperture and the iso at the same settings until it got down to 25 seconds and then as it got darker it went to uh, f18 or excuse me f20 um, kept it there for two shots then f18 then f16 14 etc down to f28 
and then started playing with the ISO started making that higher number so 250 500 etc 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 down to 2000 which is where my maximum parameters were set um, so this is where it maxed out on what it was going to do and oh uh, well, then I started getting some high clouds in there so that got the picture brighter uh, and then as the evening progressed it actually kept it there until uh, it went to 20 seconds instead of 25 seconds and then as it brightened up it started uh, changing the ISO 1600, 1250, back up I think to 1000 and it ended about 1.33 in the morning uh, so again I wasn't outside having to monitor this uh, all of that time now of course overnight your settings are going to change that much it's dark you know it's going to stay that dark it's really as the sun sets that you want um, a tool like this to be in charge of your camera so you don't have to be so until about here where it finally maxed out its settings which was uh, somewhere about 9.05 uh, in the evening so after 9 o'clock it pretty much kept the settings constant um, until the sun, excuse me, the moon came out. Um, it was a bright moon. Um, it was a full moon like three days before this, so it was still a bright moon. And you can see the shadows of the moon, um, or the trees from the moonlight as it moved across. Not the greatest place for me to do a nighttime time lapse. I'll admit that right away. This is not what uh, the kind of time lapse that I'm going to put out because I've got a lot of um, light pollution off to my south is a relatively decent sized town the moon was pretty bright uh, and I'm near the Dulles uh, International Airport so you can see streaks going through as airplanes um, let's see you can see a bunch of streaks right there as the airplanes were coming through to go land at the airport so don't judge my time lapse on how pretty it is it's not pretty uh, I wasn't doing it to get a nice time lapse I was doing it to test Arsenal and it did what I wanted it to do it, although it did it consistently underexposed but since it was consistently underexposed a an exposure compensation should be able to remedy that or I could just go into time uh, excuse me uh, Lightroom and increase the exposure for the whole thing uh, overall in fact my next steps are I'm going to go into to uh, Lightroom I'll do my keyframing uh, exported into time or excuse me loaded up into uh, you know, into Lightroom make my adjustments and render out a time-lapse video I'm actually going to do two one with no adjustments in Lightroom and one with adjustments in Lightroom and I'll show you what those look like Before I sum up, I just want to remind you, this was a beta test with uh, the, the Arsenal. Their new software uh, is in beta form at this time. So it's not fair for me to evaluate how well it works because it's not in its final form yet. However, I did additional tests, including one with the Syrup uh, uh, Tilt and Pan uh, bracket setup. On my camera and it actually worked very well so one of the things that the new software in the arsenal gives you is the ability to work with a slider or in this case a tilt and pan bracket so that the arsenal will still control the exposure uh, on your camera but not the actual shutter release so it'll continually update the exposure triangle but this as it's supposed to do will operate the shutter so that the shutter's not going to go off while one of these is moving. So a, one of these will use a uh, move, shoot, move method. So it will um, move, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot, etc. 
But if this is controlling the actual shutter, then you'd have to somehow sync it up so that move and then this go shoot and then move and this go shoot. You don't want to do that. So this controls the actual um, shutter, but this controls the exposure. And I liked it. Again, it did what I wanted it to do. This controlled the exposure for the time lapse, for the uh, Holy Grail time lapse, while this was turning the camera and operating the shutter. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. So, so far, um, I like it. I did find a couple of issues that I did report to Arsenal, and they're looking into it. But again, it's a beta software. That's what I'm supposed to do, is find those issues. Uh, I don't use this for what it was originally intended for, um, was to help you take better pictures, uh, to better stills. Uh, I still use my own eye to do that, and then I'll take it into Lightroom, Photoshop, etc., and, and make my whatever adjustments there. Um, I keep meaning to test it like that, and there's plenty of videos where they're out there where they actually are testing it, but what I really, really wanted was the um, Holy Grail time lapse and the ability to do a Holy Grail time lapse and a, a slider, or in this case, tilt and pan. So uh, at this point, I'm extremely hopeful because it looks like it's going to do exactly what I wanted it to do. It works with my genie. Uh, it works without the genie. It still does a very nice holy grail. So right now I'm going to give it, you know, yeah, I want this. Uh, I can't wait for the final software to come out because it actually, because of a bug, did ruin one of my time lapses. Uh, it sat out there for hours, and it wasn't until later that I realized uh, something got messed up. So for my final summing up of the whole experiment, uh, again, beta version, but I really like it. I did run into a couple of issues. I did have one time lapse ruined uh, because of a bug that I did report, and I have every confidence that Arsenal will fix it. But the fact that I can do Holy Grail time lapses without constantly staring at the back of my camera uh, over the length of it, and that I can also use pan, tilt, slide, all of it along with it, uh, along with building the Holy, T Holy Grail time lapse, uh, I really, really like that. That's what I've been looking forward to with this. So um, I can't wait for the final software uh, to get out there and then really start using this. So if you don't have one of these, I'm not going to say go out and buy one. Uh, evaluate whether or not it's something that you want to do because you're doing Holy Grail time lapses. Um, Otherwise, I mean, this does the time lapse if all I'm doing is a pan and tilt or pan tilt slide or whatever kind of time lapse. This still takes care of the actual shooting, and if you set up whatever settings you want on your camera and can live with them throughout the entire time lapse, you probably don't want, need one of these. Um, but if you want to do a holy grail time lapse with one of these, the last thing you want to do is as it's moving, making changes to your exposure because every time you do, you're touching this whole rig and it moves around. You don't want to do that. So it's nice to have this doing it for you. So once the final version of the software comes out, uh, I can't wait to get out there and test it, do some more Holy Grails, do some more Holy Grails with pan tilt slide, uh, and really get some good use out of this. Uh, whether Again, whether or not you want to buy it, Take a look, evaluate it for your own personal reasons. I've got one. I'm very happy with uh, with the results so far. If you're a gadget guy like me, <laughs> you're going to want one because it just takes care of that for you. And you even can watch it over your phone. It will build the time lapse on your phone while it's doing it. So it's really cool to have that. Uh, again, if you're a gadget person, or if you like looking through the back of it and making your adjustments, you don't need one. But again, if you're going to do a Holy Grail with one of these, keep your hands off the camera. Let this do it for you. Hope that helps. Have a great day and thanks for watching.